Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am Ken Eels Photographer, Randall M. Roof, and today I want to talk to you about the push-pull lens, and a lot of people have been saying, or if you talk to a lot of people that use, whether it's a Canon lens, or this Tamron lens, or whoever makes the push-pull lens, um, the sentiment that some people are saying online or what, what you talk to professionals is that because it's a push-pull lens and air flows in and out when you when you push and pull it there's a little bit of place for air to go in and out that the problem with this is that it sucks in dirt and debris and it clogs up the uh, inside of the lens and let me tell you something that's really from from what my experience is a non-issue Okay, now is there a possibility for lens or lens for dirt and stuff to get inside? Yes, air does go when you push and pull. Air goes in, comes out, but dust getting inside the lens really not an issue. Now, granted, I don't shoot a lot of in the desert or sandy places where there's you know a lot of sand uh, in the air and stuff. Having said that, I have shot environments where there is sand. Okay with this camera, with this lens, and it's really a non-issue, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, okay? Uh, yeah, again, yes, the air goes in and out, but my experience is very simple. All the dirt and crap, 99.99% .99 of all the dirt and crap you're going to get outside. So, phone's ringing. So, that's what you've got to worry about, is keeping the front lens front of your lens clean. Now, you know, I put, I've got a Hoya 77mm um, filter on top of this lens, and that is for two reasons. One, to keep the lens, actually, the lens itself clean, because this filter is about $25. This lens is $300. So, obviously, a lens is more important than a filter. If this filter gets dirty or dusty, or cracks for some reason, or, you know, gets hit by something, can replace it, and it's not not a big, it's a little bit of a cost, but not a big deal. So, if anything's going to get dirty, it's going to be the front of your lens or the front of your filter um, in this camera. Now, you know, I'm not saying it can't get dirty inside of this, but my experience has been that is a non-issue. Okay, all the dirt outside on the lens. Of course, as you can see, the this plastic part that covers the metal part. It's, you know, it's, um, you know, from fingerprints and stuff, it's not a big deal because it's covered in plastic and it's protected the lens, but like I said, the, the majority of the dirt, front of the lens, that's what you got to worry about, that's what you got to keep clean. Having a push-pull lens like this and having the dirt go inside is really, for all intents and purposes, unless you're living in the desert, shooting desert, 20, you know, all the time, all every day. Uh, and even I don't know. I mean, I don't have, like I said, I don't have experience doing that, so I really couldn't tell you the experience. But I, like you know, I have shot in dirt environment, not desert, but more dirt environments where it's dry dirt, not sand, but dry dirt, and it gets in the air. And I've used this camera and, uh, and this lens, especially the lens. And again, non-issue. So don't, when you're going to per my here's why I want to get to my point is. When you're going and you're considering a push-pull lens, because I love this 3300, I love the focal length of it, okay? Now, this isn't as good as the Canon lens, but the Canon lens is 2300, plus tax and shipping and all that. This is 300, okay? And uh, it's pretty much the same. It's just the glass isn't better or isn't as good. It doesn't focus as fast. But overall, generally speaking, it's a good lens, okay? So, don't let somebody tell you uh, being a push-pull lens, it's going to be get dirty real easy on the inside because that's really not an issue. Now, of course, I would want to soak this in water. Uh, if I dip, dipped it in a tank of water, that would obviously be bad because water could very easily, I mean, especially if you get it to the point where it's inside this, you know, water could... 
you know, if you're submerging it in a tank of water, obviously it's going to destroy your camera and destroy your lens. If it didn't destroy it, it's going to make it so you have to have it repaired without question. Um, so, I mean, while it's okay to have it out in rain, you know, if it starts to rain, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But you're obviously not going to dip it in the tank. And I try to keep it when it's raining. I try not to take it outside. But if I do have to use it when I'm outside, I'm not too worried as long as it doesn't get too bad. And even if I'm pushing and pulling the lens, whether it be snow, I've shot, the, I've shot outside in snow and not had any problems. I've shot outside in uh, light, misty rain. Uh, not no problems with anything water getting in the lens. So I recommend the push pull. I mean, would it be better to have a one that doesn't push pull and you can twist? Yes, but those are more expensive. And uh, not always, but generally speaking, they're more expensive. And there are advantages to the push pull. I mean, it's easy to sit here instead of having to twist, or you can just sit here and it's, it's easier to manipulate, uh, in my opinion. Um, not that a twist, a twist is that hard, uh, obviously not. But uh, I like the push pull. It's very convenient. It's very easy to use. And uh, maintenance, like I said, the main thing to maintenance, maintenance as far as this lens. Uh, now, granted, I don't take this lens off this camera because this is the only lens I have that goes with this camera. Um, it's the only lens I use. Um, it's twenty three hundred because the reason I got this is because it has that range. It has. You know the 28 to 300 because before I had the 20 to 300, I had 28 to 70, and a 70 to 210, and a 400. So I had three lenses. Well, there's a lot of times where I know I've been in situations when I first started doing with 35 millimeter film where yeah, I had the 28 or the, let's see what 20, 28 to 70, a 70 to 210, and then a 400. Um, I can't wish I had 400 for this, but I don't. Anyway, point is, um. Well, even between, between that 20 and 70, you know, there's a lot of times where I need to go from one extreme to the other very quickly, and to do that, you have to change lenses. And I know there's times that were real frustrating, i got several in my mind where I'm thinking of it precisely, where I couldn't get the picture I wanted quick enough because I had to change the lenses. And it's a very upsetting to know, oh, that's a great shot, I'm like, just, and you can't do it. So having that 20 to 300... So this has eliminated 99 for me pretty much all of that because the only thing the only downside to this lens on this camera is this is a crop sensor it has a 1.4 magnification which means it's not full frame which means that there is some magnification okay which means it's not actually a 20 to 300 it's more like a 55 something to 380 or so. I'm not, I'm not sure what the exact number is, but it's 1.4 times what um, the 2300 is supposed to be if it was a full frame camera. So, uh, aside from that, great lens. And again, if I put this on a full frame body, it would be a 2300, a true 2300. So it's just a matter of it's not the lens, it's the camera that does the crop, okay? Um, digital XT, by the way. And uh, so I recommend the 2300. Great lens. Again, not as good as a Canon lens because Canon makes the best stuff, in my opinion. Uh, Nikon makes some good stuff too. So does Sony. So does a lot of other companies. But again, 20, the 2300 from Canon is $2,300. This lens right here, 300 So this is the one I use. I wish I could afford the Canon one. Believe me, if I won the lottery, that would be like the first thing to get, would be besides the new camera. Uh, not that this is bad, but there's a lot of stuff you can get with it new cameras and a lot of new features I'd like to have it. My point is one of the first things that we get would be the Canon 2300. That would be the first prime lens even though it's a push-pull too. I love uh, that's still the first lens I want to get because um, it's just it's awesome. It's glass. It's awesome. It's make awesome stuff. Again this isn't bad. I love it. For 300 bucks this is a good really good deal. Push-pull. Highly recommend it. Not perfect. Uh, it has some things where it can be improved, obviously. But, uh, for example, let me, let me tell you about with this particular lens. Uh, when you lock it, okay, it only locks in the bottom position. If I sit here, unlock it. I can't lock it. Let's say right there's 100 millimeters. I can't lock it at 100. What it does is it locks when it gets down to the 28. 
Whereas the Canon lens, you can tighten it at whatever millimeter you want to. So, I mean, there's different reasons. But that's not what I'm talking about. The point is, dust, not a problem from the inside for the most part. Uh, like I said, for me, it's a non-issue, okay? Uh, the main dirt is on the outside. Push-pull isn't a problem. It's easy to use. It's simple. Um, so I recommend it. Uh, again, you've got that wide variety of focal length, even with a crop sensor. With a full frame, you can even get, you know, even closer. So, getting close, far away, in between, which is awesome. So, I love it, the push-pull. I love the 20 to 300. Now, my ideal lens would be a 25 to 500. Um, but, again, to do that, they would have to, more than likely, they would have to make the the lens probably longer and wider at the end. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure they would. But uh, 2300 push pull, love it, use it, rely on it. It's my workhorse lens, it's my only lens for this camera because I really don't, with the exception of I wish I had a macro lens, and I wish I had a really telephoto lens, maybe a 600 to 800 or something like that for sports. But for, I mean, I've, done, I've, shot, I've shot sports with 2300 push pull. And you got some good results. Um, so, that's all I'm going to say. I just, you know what I'm saying? It's a good lens. I love it. I use it. Admire it. I just wish it was the Canon lens, which looks neater and is better. But aside from that, push pull, good technology, and highly recommend it. So, until next time, I am Ken Yost for Rally Moves. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and may God bless you. And as always, keep taking those pictures.